Thank you for coming for day two. Uh, we're going to talk about inventories, and uh, as you heard, there's a lot of different uh, accounts of computer arrays that exist, whether it's a tributary array, main stem array, hatchery array, uh, estuary array, whatever we're looking at, there's a lot of different ones that are registered or not registered across the basis. Uh, we want to talk a little bit about inventories. We started getting into it when we talked about um, the information on O&M. I think it's important to understand what you have at each site. Um, you know, whether we're looking at BPA property inventories and you're a bean pattern like me, um, you can't understand what information is there is what assets exist. We're just looking at the money associated with what's going on. Uh, when you're looking at uh, BPA contact O&M work elements, Addis, we uncovered that you know there's a lot of information, a lot of additional sites across the basin that aren't registered, and maybe that's because they're um, for different purposes, whether it's land break, bull trout, or if it's going into a different system. Um, if maybe it's just an effectiveness study that somebody's doing research on. Um, but I think it's good to talk about registering and getting your information in there and talking about the purpose. Um, when I started to look at the assets and information out there, um, you know, StreamNet has facility inventory that communicates to BPA and the council on the assets in the landscape. But um, some of the information is disconnected. Um, and there's links. I think the appropriate thing is to make, continue to make sure that we have up-to-date links um, that keep going and going back and hitting the tabs or other sites to let people know where you need to go for the information. And in the example here, that's um, at least there's a link here from the stream that to give you back information and metadata in the actual site in the tab. So you can click on it and it'll take you. So how do people find the information, whether it's the pit rate, whether it's the temperature water or the flow gauge that's associated with these things? Where do you go to get the information? Um, so through contract management, we requested an inventory of, through ISAP of their, their information and their pilot study. Um, and we funded a pretty much a quick assessment and looked at future operation costs and form prioritization, prioritization for O&M. For the ice number, right? some of them we figured out that you know, with the closing of some of the ice mm -hmm. use, like Fish Creek, um, O and M on some of the sites may not be necessary. But there had to be a dialogue with partners in the region to figure out where do you continue um, within the John Day? Who needs that asset? Who doesn't? Um, and so we got a massive spreadsheet back from Bottom um, Mark, thing, and uh, giving us an assessment of each array, why equipment exists, um, how much does it cost. And we had to figure out that it's too costly to maintain all this and do a replacement first year, second year. And some of the information and some of the equipment, even though um, you could upgrade, it doesn't need to be upgraded. So we've had some of those discussions. But you know, when you do an inventory, what kind of information are we looking at? I think that's one of the questions today that we need to try to figure out is of the assets on the landscape, what equipment do you use? What's out there? What do you need to upgrade? What does it cost? And from that standpoint, it can help us if plan, buy the buy new upgrades when necessary, or uh, make stockpiles of information for equipment if we have catastrophic, catastrophic events. So, you know, as, as we've talked before, not all pit arrays are the same. You know, different site standards should be allowed. Um, there's different technology. Um, we have an additional information that's been provided to EPA, Idaho, uh, with developed through um, with NESPER, IDS, and uh, Showband collaboratively developed the uh, inventory and assessment, which we'll be talking about by Tim Copeland, um, which does a quick assessment of the function and purpose of the race across the landscape. Um, I think the key part about that is it's collaborative. They sat down together and talked to the region and found out what do you, what exists and uh, tried to put some information that they thought was essential. And we'll hear more about that in a minute. Um, I think one of the other things comes down to site assessment forms. There were questions, you know, when you go out, how do you assess site? One, the placement, you know, what are the physical variables, environmental variables associated with uh, the site? We're hoping to get that as a preliminary report and guidance of site assessment forms under the pilot project for OM. And there's operations information. So if you go out to a site, you do a site assessment, what does that look like? Um, so from the site assessment form, um, you know, when you look at placement, what are we looking at for population representation, environmental conditions, site stability, tenant history, repair, replacement frequency, permits? Um, those are some of the things that you might consider. And related to operations, 
networks and how complex those river systems are. But sometimes, you know, BSD information that's critical is more than just fish in, fish out, it's fish distribution. So you want to have um, subpopulations and such. Uh, so making sure you place proper placements and um, a proper network documenting um, helps us make the justification uh, for funding and understanding how we can um, prioritize and support those networks of arrays. Um, so that spreadsheet that I created um, with the information from IDFG has a lot of information. Uh, there's a lot of duplications, different terms, whether or not we're using latitude, longitude, X, Y uh, options. Um, putting it in a standard format, I think if we can take the time and discuss you know, what information do we need to have related to um, site operation information from all this, you know, whether it's site code, site name, um, the O&M reference information, the facility name, who funds it, who provides the information, latitude, longitude, what hucks you're in, what things can be derived, what things you have to input. Um, this is just one example of one array um, and for site information. There's additional information, uh, whether it's operations information, so if you're looking at the target population, target shield, field instruments, Hawkeye, coho, or other species, um, What's your data management reference number? What's your database? What's the site metadata link? The site record link? Where do you need to go to get the information from Catagis or if it's in BioMark server? And then if you're looking at infrastructure management costs, what information do we have to have for infrastructure description? Um, I think we were talking about this yesterday. Knowing what kind of uh, antennas and motors you have helps, you, um, helps troubleshooters and uh, technicians. We need help to understand what's going on at that site and get people prepared to go out to um, work on it. The infrastructure cost, whether or not, I think you know, it can help us understand the planning um, and maybe it's the status of the information, the status of the condition of the infrastructure, if it's old, new, mm -hmm. and kind of a replacement. Um, I think it helps us you know, try to figure out where are we going to go with you know, buying certain things. Um, and whether or not we look at operation costs, I think there were some questions of uh, mode of maritime, and I think we were going to be discussing that because a lot of people want to understand you know, how much does it cost to operate a site, why are we being charged so much for a modem? Uh, I think we'll get into that. Um, I think there are some discussions around it, but I don't think we have to have this for everybody. I don't know if these are things that we need to do. So I think we need to have a discussion of right size with inventory of information um, and make sure we can. Uh, Plan properly. At the end, I put O&M priority, so you know, there may be regional priorities, um, project priorities. So as you pull out your inventory, how do we discuss you know, whose priorities that we're looking at under the um, regional entity sponsor or the partners? Um, because I think a lot of these arrays are multi-purpose, multi-user, um, and how can we make sure that we understand the assets on the, on the landscape? And that, that prioritization discussion that was mentioned in IDG uh, by Tim Pope. Idaho, um, that the co-managers talk. I think we need to get together and have everybody talking collaboratively about what are our priorities and how we manage them. Um, so the next step, you know, it's a collaborative discussion on what's necessary uh, for site metadata needs and proper documentation. So where are we going to document this information? How do we make it accessible? How much is too much and how much is just right? Let's make that the find the Goldilocks uh, spreadsheet. Um, so there's also a need for collaborative meetings. Um, I don't want to have this be a discussion where you guys come in independently um, at a start of your budget discussion saying, I need this for my project. I think it'd be better to be saying great agency-wide reason why we need this uh, and let's start prioritizing things and we need to have some collaborative discussion among the partners to understand the assets. Uh, it is an asset. We have to try to manage appropriately. Um, and as uh, Tim mentioned, you know, which sites do we need? How do we prioritize O&M? How do we prioritize which sites?